All right, students, we are going to do small changes in this lesson, yeah? Small changes is a part of differentiation, so, uh, and it's, uh, it's taught after rates of change, okay? So, now, something to note, yeah? Small changes, a lot of students actually confuse this with, with rate of change, so pay attention later, I will explain to you what is the difference, all right? Now, basically, small changes means you are going to find a change, all right? So, let's use question number 64, to uh, illustrate or for me to explain to you about small changes and approximations, right? Now, 64 says, the radius of a circle increases from 10 cm to 10.2 cm. So that means, right, originally the radius is 10 cm and it increases to 10.2 cm. Now, uh, when you see this, right, there's an increase and uh, notice this, they did not say increases at a rate of something, something. So, which means this is not rate of change. In the previous uh, lessons, when you learn about rates of change, you notice that the question will say um, the radius of a circle increases at a rate of 2 cm per second. You know, there will always be the word rate, so there is no rate here. That means there is no time. It just says that the radius increased from 10 to 10.2 cm. The it's not per second, doesn't matter about the time. Okay, so this is small changes, yeah? And uh, the first thing that you're going to extract from the question is the information that the radius has changed 0 0.2 centimeter, correct or not? Has increased. So we say that delta r, yeah, small change in r is 0 0.2. Alright, from here we can get this information. Then they say from the question, you find the other one, which is find the approximate change in its area. That means you are going to find the delta A. That means what is the change in its area when the radius changes or increases 0 0.2 centimeter? That's what you're looking for. Okay, so now from these two things, small changes, you only need two things, delta A, delta R, and uh, now you're going to form D something, D something, yeah, to equate, this, to equate this with the D something, D something. Now, what is that you're going to form? You are going to use the formula based on whatever they're asking for. They're asking for area, right? So there will be an, uh, there will be the, you can use the formula for area of the circle because this is about area of circle, right? So area of a circle is pi r squared. Therefore, when you look at this, you can do a differentiation with dA dr. And dA dr is 2 pi r. Okay, now small changes does not have chain rule, only rates of change has chain rule. This one, you just do an equation. Um, dA dr, can you see that? It is approximately equal to delta A over delta r. You learn this in the beginning of uh, differentiation, right? So now you have an equation and you can solve it. dA dr is 2 pi r equals to delta A you don't know and delta r is 0 0.2, right? So now you have an equation and you are looking for delta A, which is your unknown, okay? The small change in A. So we're going to shift this up and what is the value of r here? You put in the original value of r, not 10.2 because 0 0.2 is accounted for here. You've already counting it, the difference. So you don't put the change, you put original, yeah? So that's 2 times 10 times pi and uh, times 0 0.2. That is a small change in area. So the small change in the area of the circle would be uh, 20 pi times 0 0.2 which is a uh, 4 pi centimeter square. Yeah, notice there's no per second here. So what does this mean? The small changes, the situation is different from the rate of change. In small changes, the situation is such that uh, there is a circle and uh, the radius is uh, originally a particular amount, maybe it's at 10 centimeter in this case, and it increases to 10.2. Because of this increase, the area will also have changed. What would be the change in the area, which is delta A? Yeah, so the change in area is counted using this method. Yeah, first extract the change that they give you, a small change in radius, and then uh, whatever that you're looking for, which is the corresponding change in area. Okay, then make a differentiation from the formula that uh, we talk about. In this case, it's area. So use area formula and you get DADR. From here, you can see that DADR and delta A and delta R can form an approximation.
Okay, you can write as equal, but actually it just means it's approximately the same. They're not exactly the same. Yeah, it's approximately the same. So then you get an approximation. That's why the topic says it is small changes and approximation. Approximation means it's a little bit kurang. It's not exactly the same. Yeah, okay. So that's, uh, that's the situation for small changes. Let's have a look at question number 65 uh, so that you, are, uh, you have a better understanding. Number 65. The height of a cylinder is 10 cm. Okay, so let's say you have a cylinder here. Okay, there's a radius and you, ha you have the height is 10 cm. And its radius is R. Okay, the radius is R. Find the approximate change in its volume. So now when you read the question, you must know how to extract the information along the way. Yeah, Find the approximate change in its volume means you're looking for delta V. Okay, you do not know delta V, okay, approximate change in its volume if the radius decreases from 7 to 6.95. That means what is the change in the radius? The change in the radius, delta R, is, please take note here, it is decreasing from 7 to 6.95. That means the radius has changed by 0 0.05 negative. It's a negative here. Yeah, because it decreases. Okay, so from here... You need to form the equation. So it's delta V over delta R equals to D something, D something. D what would that be? Obviously, it's volume because it, they're asking for volume. So you use the volume formula. Volume of what? Of the cylinder because they say that this is cylinder. So it's pi R square H. Remember, I told you all these volumes and surface areas of all these uh, 3D things. You have to memorize them for add math because it's not given. Okay, so volume is pi R square H. So now... Here is a tricky part, yeah, a tricky part, so please pay attention. The tricky part is this. Are you going to DVDR or DVDH? You're going to DVDR because you, you, have D, you have delta R here, okay? If you do DVDH, then it's, then it's not equal anymore. It's not delta V, delta H here, understand? So therefore, you know that you're going to do DVDR, but there's a H there. And remember, as we did in rates of change, you can't DVDR with an H there. What are you going to do with the H? You're going to ignore the H? You can't. All right. So now in this case, they have given you 10 centimeter. So, so there, are, there are two ways to go about it. Either you find a way to substitute H with R. Remember, we did question 61 in rates of change. It's, it's like this. Okay. Now, either you find a way to, uh, uh, to substitute H with R or... Uh, H is given at a certain instance is a certain amount, is a certain uh, number. Okay, so in this case, you substitute this in. Right, and you need to substitute this before you differentiate, yeah? So, volume is equals to, that's 10 pi r square. Okay, you do remember that you have to substitute before you differentiate and not after. Just like the rates of change, you must get rid of the H. You must substitute the H with R first before you differentiate. Alright, now you differentiate. So it's dV dR. And then you get 20 pi R. Okay, so 20 pi R is dV dR. Now form your approximation. Your approximation is uh, delta V over delta R is approximately equal to dV dR. Okay, and uh, delta V is whatever that you're looking for. Would equal to dV dR is 20 pi R times delta R is negative 0 0.05. Now, what was the original value of R? You're supposed to put the original value of R in. And uh, remember, it says the radius decreases from 7 to 6.95. That means originally the radius was 7. Okay, so uh, that's 20 pi 7 uh, times negative 0 0.05. And the final answer is uh, 140 negative 0 0.05. That's negative 7 pi and it's volume, so remember to write centimeter cube. And that's it. Okay, so that means, right, for this particular cylinder, originally the radius is 7. Okay, and when it decreases to 0. Point, it decreases by 0 0.05, that means decreases to 6.95. What happens to the volume? The volume also decreases because obviously the cylinder is getting thinner, right? Can you imagine it? The cylinder is getting thinner. The height remains the same, it just gets thinner. So when the cylinder gets thinner, obviously the volume will reduce. How much would the volume reduce? It reduces negative uh, 0. So it reduces 7 pi centimeter cube. The negative tells you that it reduces. 
Okay, please understand the context of what you're doing. Yeah, there are a lot of problem solving in uh, small changes and rates of change. All right, now we'll do uh, question 66 in the following video. I'll see you then.